All right, this is the notes for section 12.6, the side, 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 or SSS similarity theorem. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video at this time and read the section before continuing on. So just like we did with triangle congruences, when we tried to say that two triangles were congruent to each other, we had we came up with some some triangle congruences or set conditions that if we knew this we knew the triangles were congruent to each other well the sim a similar idea applies to similarity in other words if i look at two triangles being similar one of those is what we call the side 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 similarity theorem just like there was the side 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 congruence theorem, there's also a side-side-side similarity theorem. And what makes it a little bit different is that instead of all three sides of the triangles being uh, congruent to each other, in the side-side-side similarity theorem, what we're saying is that all three sides of, of, a, um, of, of a one triangle are proportional, okay? meaning that all of their ratios are equal to the three sides of the second triangle, then we can say that two triangles are similar to each other. So if we can show that the ratio between the sides, all, all three pairs of sides of the two triangles are, are the same, they're equal to each other, then we can say that the triangles are, um, are uh, similar to each other. So let's take a look at example one here. It says the sides of one triangle are 24, 56, and 40. The sides of another triangle are 98, 42, and 70. Determine if the triangles are similar. So if I can show that the ratios between the, all three pairs of sides are, are equal to each other, then I can say that the triangles are similar to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the ratios where I'm going to compare the shortest sides, the middle length sides, and the longest sides and see if those ratios are equal. So the smallest one here is 24 and the large, the smallest one over here is 42. So I'm going to compare those two and I'm going to see if they're equal to the middle length ones which would be 40 compared to over here that would be 70 and then I'm going to compare that to the end last ones which was 56 compared to 98. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my calculator and I can enter each ratio. So I can enter this ratio first and see if they're equal. And if they are, then I'm going to put enter those, these two ratios and see if they are equal. If at any point in time they aren't equal, we know that they are not similar triangles. So on my calculator, the first thing I did was I took 24 over 42 and said it was equal to 40 over 70. Okay. Well, if I hit enter, my calculator tells me, yes, that's true. Those two are equal. So I know that those ratios are the same. And then I took 40 over 70 and said it was equal to 56 over 98. And once again, I hit enter. And when I do that, my calculator also told me that was true. Therefore, all three of those ratios must be equal to each other by the transitive property. 24 over 42 is equal to 40 over 70. It must also be equal to 56 over 98. So I can say that those two triangles are similar to each other. So over here I would say, yes, they are similar to each other by the side, side, side similarity theorem. Okay, let's take a look at example two here. It says, uh, refer to the diagram at right from the guided example number two. That's from your reading, where triangle FED is similar to triangle GOV. Generally, when we have it written like that, the first uh, figure we will refer to as the pre-image, and the second figure is the image. It doesn't have to be that way, but most of the time it just works out better to kind of work with it that way. Uh, and then it gives us the the angle measures and the side lengths that that are given. So I've, I've labeled the triangle with those. You, you're going to want to do that on yours as well. And the first question asks us to find what the ratio of similitude. Well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to find two sides that correspond with each other. And remember that ratio of similitude is image over preimage. So I know that 8 here corresponds with 2 over here. So the image distance would be 2. 
and the pre-image distance would be 8 and that is from um, GV on top and FD on bottom and if I simplify that that's 1 fourth or 0.25 either one of those would work either one of those would represent the ratio of similitude okay then it asks us to find what is the length of OG well if I multiply the if I take K times what corresponds with OG well OG corresponds with think about it this way that's the first two of this one there's for it corresponds with FE and FE is 7 so if I take 7 times K I'll have my answer well K is 1 fourth or 0.25 so if I take 7 times 0.25 okay I get 7 fourths or 1 and 3 fourths therefore that would be the length of OG then part C just asked me to estimate the measure of each angle of triangle GOV to the nearest tenth. Well, we're given two angles in this similar triangle, and I can find the third by subtracting these two from 180. So if I add these two up and subtract from 180, I believe I get 46.6. Um, so that would be that angle. So it, I know that angle F is got to be congruent to the one that it corresponds with and angle F corresponds with angle G and since they're 40 F is 46.6 .6, G must also be 46.6 .6. I know that the measure of angle um, E has to be equal to the measure of angle O, therefore that must be 75.5 degrees and finally I know the measure of angle um, D is going to be equal to the measure of angle G oh I'm sorry the measure of angle V yeah, so D and V would have to be equal to each other and that would be 57.9. So remember, as we look at similar triangles, although their 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 um, side lengths are proportional, their angles are going to be congruent to each other. All right. The next couple examples are going to deal with Pythagorean triples. And just a reminder, what Pythagorean triples are. When we talk about a Pythagorean triple, we're saying that it's it's three integer values that can be side lengths for a right triangle. And I've listed for you below here um, some of the the common ones or the most often used ones. So three, four, five is the most often. Then the other three here are also uh, common Pythagorean triples: five, twelve, thirteen, eight, fifteen, seventeen, and seven, twenty-four, and twenty-five. Now, it, it basically what we know about think, if we think about Pythagorean triples and we think about um, similarity of triangles, if if we know that um, if we know that two side lengths of a right triangle are multiples of two corresponding parts of a Pythagorean triple, um, then we know the third part will also be a multiple of the other part of that triple. So. Um, so by by knowing Pythagorean triples and knowing that that two of the of the parts are multiples of a Pythagorean triple, we can find that third side by using that same idea. So it's kind of a hard concept, but let's just take a look at number three, and I think you'll kind of get an idea of what, what we're talking about here. It says, a right triangle has a hypotenuse of 170 and a leg of 150. Find the length of the other leg. Well, here's the way I'm going to think about that. I, I'm looking at this Pythagorean triple right here, um, where we have 8, 15, and 17. And you'll notice that one of the legs is 10 times 15. The other one is 10 times 17. So what this idea using the Pythagorean triples tells us is 
that that third leg must be 80 or 10 times what this is. Since my k value as it relates to these Pythagorean triples is 10, each of the side lengths of the new triangle has to be 10 times that basic 8, 15, 17 Pythagorean triple. Therefore, the side length of the third side would be 80. Okay, number four is uh, very similar to number three. Um, so we have a right triangle, the hypotenuse is 5 eighths, the leg is 3 eighths. Use Pythagorean triple to find the length of the other side. Well, 5 and 3, um, if you think about those, they, they would have to be um, part of this Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5. So if, if 5 and 3, so the other side must be 4. But um, our k value is equal to 1 eighth of our Pythagorean triple. Therefore, it's going to be um, uh, the the third side would have to be four eighths or one half using our Pythagorean triples there.